right, so this is, a, like you said, we're going to explore some retention trends in our Carlin Dangler tagged uh, flathead catfish. So we did this study at Branch Stoke Reservoir, which is a 1800 acre flood control reservoir located near Lincoln, Nebraska in the southeast corner of our state. Uh, our study had multiple objectives, including uh, habitat used to flathead catfish, as well as population dynamics, which will be, uh, which is, took care of the tagging portion that we're kind of interested in here today. Specifically, uh, those objectives were to look at population dynamics and survival estimates. And to capture our flatheads, we were using um, pulse DC, low frequency electrofishing out there. And you can see we started our uh, study back in 2010 with a pilot study to kind of assess uh, tagging feasibility and study sites throughout the lake. And then we went uh, full bore from 2011 to 2014 with the tagging portion. These are the dangler tags that we used. They all had a unique ID number on them. Uh, we put them in the, the fish using two parallel stainless steel needles, passed underneath the dorsal fin. We then passed the wires of the dangler tag back through those needles, removed the needles, and then secured the dangler tag. Um, we were processing a lot of fish when we were doing this tagging. And so one thing that we did, instead of using these smaller boards, is we actually built this uh, large board that we could uh, place across the front of the boat when we were working up fish, which saved our backs. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally, though, one of those fish did uh, would get away from us and, uh, and fight back. Here's some brief uh, uh, catch summaries. So during when we were doing uh, the bulk of our tagging uh, from 11 to 14, you can see that we were, we were handling a lot of fish out there. Um, on average these years, we were handling right around, or catching right around uh, 480 fish per year that were untagged. And you can see our recapture percentage steadily rose through all those years. So we were feeling pretty good about dangler tag retention at that point. Following the 2014 sampling season, we switched gears. We felt pretty good, like we had a pretty good handle on habitat use out there. Felt like we had a pretty good idea on the population dynamics, population estimates, and that sort of thing. So we switched to more of a monitoring survey where we uh, reduced the number of sites that we were sampling as well as the frequency that we were out there. We also in doing so, quit tagging. However, when we would come across a, a recapture, we would record that information. So you can see starting in 15 through 19, the number of fish that we were handling decreased, but we were still handling a significant amount of fish out there. Um, and the, the number that didn't have tags, uh, it, it was about 360 fish um, per year out there. But what happened was the number of recaptures that we saw, it dropped off immediately. And so red flags started going off um, that maybe our, our retention wasn't as good as what we thought it was when we were actively tagging. Uh, we went into this thinking those dangler tags were more or less going to be permanent. So the problem now, obviously we can't go back in time and put another tag in those fish. We didn't double mark those. Um, and you're probably wondering in your head, why didn't you just clip their adipose fin? We already had fish in the population that had their adipose fin clipped. Um, fish were stocked back in 99 and 2000 that all those fish that were stocked had an adipose clip already. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't feasible um, to do. But for the purpose of this talk, we do have numbers. We were handling a significant amount of fish. Uh, we have almost 5,500 fish in our database. We, during the tagging years, we, had, we handled over 3,100 fish. We tagged um, over 2,200 fish. 
And to date, we have over a thousand recaptures in our database. So using all that data, we should be able to find some trends in why these fish didn't hold on to their tags. But we're having to look at it backwards by looking at the fish that did hold on to the tags. So these are some things that um, as, a, as a group with the co-authors that we came up with is, is it a body condition thing? Uh, is it a mortality issue? Is it a growth issue? Um, or is it a length of time issue? So as we d dig into this, we'll start with body condition. To start here, if we look at our smaller fish, uh, during our tagging years, you can see there is a significant difference between our unmarked fish and our recaptured fish for both uh, substock and stocked quality. And then when you, uh, when we break that out to the, our entire study period, that trend continues where our unmarked fish not only increase uh, their body condition over that entire study period, and they also maintain that significant difference. Our recaptured fish, uh, their body condition stayed the same as they were during that um, tagging period, those tagging years. And that trend uh, stays the same for substock and stocked quality. I should also mention for substock fish, we were only tagging fish that were 250 millimeters and above. So this group is somewhat size limited. It's only about 100 millimeter length because substock fish are below 350. As we move up in size to quality to preferred, we see the same trend during our tagging years where unmarked fish are in a better body condition than our recaptured fish during the tagging years. However, as we break that out to the entire study period, it seems that our recaptured fish are able to recover from that tagging event where they're no longer different. Um, and then as we break out to our, our large fish, you can see they're in great body condition, regardless of whether they had a, a tag in them or not. One more thing before we jump from this slide, our smaller fish were also, regardless of whether they were unmarked or, well, it's, the unmarked fish beginning were already in lower body condition. I, I realized that even low 90s is still good body condition, but comparatively speaking, low 90s compared to our, our larger bodied fish over here, where they were all over 100. Um, they, they started out in lower body condition, whereas these fish that were over 100 were seemed to, to be able to overcome that tagging event, whereas these smaller fish didn't, and they, they uh, didn't regain that body condition compared to um, when you get to this group over the entire study period. Uh, the general trend was that the, the untagged fish increased their body condition where fish with tags still kept that lower body condition. Uh, to look at mortality, we're going to look at, since we are handling so many fish in that population, we're going to need to see if our catch punit effort declined over these years. So since we had a change in method, we're not going to compare across the entire study period. We're going to keep this line in here and just compare from 11 to 14 during those tagging years and then 15 to 19. And you can see that there's no difference in catch per unit effort during our tagging years, as well as there's no difference in catch per unit effort among those, um, those monitoring years, which would indicate that us putting those tags out there was not causing additional mortality in that population, just given the amount of fish that we were, we were tagging. Uh, to look at growth, we want to look at the, the recaptured fish and then um, look at their length when we tagged them versus the length that when we caught them. 
and then extrapolate that to uh, millimeters per year to see maybe the faster growing fish would be expelling the tags, whereas the slower growing fish would not. So that's what we have here, where this is the x-axis is length at tagging versus the millimeters they grew per year. For the most part, it's, it does appear that our slower growing fish uh, are holding onto the tags. That's, we do have some fish up here that are, are faster growing that are holding onto the tags. Again, we don't have the full picture here, so it's hard to say for sure if that's what's going on and all the fast growing fish are expelling the tags. Um, but it, it, or if this is actually just the, the population, um, what is happening. If you take a mean of all the fish tagged in each one of our tagging years, you can see that the fish aren't, based on the tagging study, they're just not growing very fast in branched oak. And so finally, we wanted to look at um, each year that we tagged and then follow those recaptures through time to see how many, not see when and then how many times we caught those fish to see if there's any trends there. So, for instance, this line here would be um, all the fish in 2010 that we recaught within that 2010, uh, the percentage, likewise, uh, 2010 fish recaught in 11, you know, following it through time. You can see that every year we tagged, the following year we actually saw an increase in recapture percentage, followed by the next two years in a pretty steep decrease in recapture percentage. So we're going to jump to the next slide here. So what we want to look at is that the rate of increase the following year after tagging and then the rate of decrease the next two years to try to gain some insight in there. And we may actually be able to use that rate of loss those following two years as a general estimate of tag loss. But if we look at that rate of increase and average them over the five years that we tagged, it was a 53% increase from year zero or within year to year one, compared to a 41% rate of decrease from year one to year two. So that may actually have masked when we were actively tagging, our rate of decrease was higher than the rate of decrease and may have been why we didn't notice it while we were actively tagging. Further, if we look at from year one to year three, that rate of decrease is 68%, which would indicate a pretty high tag loss out there. We can also look at then the mean years between capture dates for each one of these. So for instance, for the fish tag in 2010, the mean uh, rate of time between capture was 1.6 years or six, seven years. And if we look at the the mean between all of those years, it was 1.66 years. And so we can maybe use that as an estimate of actual tag retention of these. And when you look at that figure up there, it kind of makes sense that it was just over a year and a half, how long these tags might have actually stayed in those fish. So what did we learn? Um, these dangler tags, they likely affected the, the body condition of our smaller fish. However, we don't know the effect of tag retention um, that had. It does appear that dangler, or that dangler tags did not appear to, to cause additional mortality on our fish. Our recaptured fish showed little annual growth. However, like I said, we don't know if those faster fish expelled the tags. And our short-term tag retention may have actually been good based on that next year actually increase in, in recapture rate. And our mean years between capture was 1.6 um, years. However, when we look at the implications that this had for our, our study goals with our population and estimates and survival estimates, we had intended to run 
our, our PEs through program mark using capture histories over the entire study period. This obviously having relatively low uh, tag retention causes some, some major issues with that. And it was just too short to, to run our models that we intended to. Um, we did try to, to just group the years uh, into two year blocks and run them through time. But even doing that, there was just too much variation between the models. They were all over the place to, to really feel confident in anything. And then with our survival estimates, we just needed, we need more years consecutive of, of capture histories to, to run those. And so they just kind of got tossed out the window. And to end, I like to thank Casey Schoenbeck, Keith Copel, Matthew Perrion for several long discussions on this project and everyone who helped collect um, fish throughout the duration of this project. And to end with, here's a, a bunch of known tag losses that we did observe during uh, our sampling out there, and I'd be happy to field any questions if we have time. We have time for a couple of questions. I'm real intrigued by the increase in recapture rates a year later. I, I don't know that you have anything to add to that, or you'd probably put it in the talk, but do you have any clue what might cause that? That's just staggering. I think we did have decent short-term tag retention. Well, yeah, I'd be willing to believe 100% there, but why? I mean, that was a pretty noticeable increase in recapture. We're, we're doing some mark recapture. <coughs> Me actually, I'm wondering if our recapture rates may be not what I'm expecting because you know I'm assuming a level playing field. If the tag's there, I'm going to have a chance to get it. But it, it seems like behaviorally or something, these must be doing something that either maybe it's the first year is lower the recapture rate, maybe they're hunkered down and you can't sample them well. I don't know, whatever. Uh, any thoughts on that that you have? I would love to hear them. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of made us scratch our heads too. I mean, sure. <laughs> the way we were doing our sampling and, you know, we also kind of thought with our studies line, I mean, and we can talk about this maybe at the social and stuff sure, too, yeah, um, getting into some of our study design, but yeah. No, I'd have, love to hear anything you have to, to say on that. Yeah. One yeah. More question. My, my question is, is exactly on the slide you got up right here is, Handling that many fish, I'm kind of assuming you might be able to give a, a little bit of a mechanism. You know, like how are these fish shedding the tags exactly? Is it wires breaking? Is it? It's a little bit of everything. I mean, you can see this fish, for instance, is the tag is obviously moving down into the body. We didn't tag any any fish that low in the body. I mean, everything was tagged up higher. Um, we have some fish where the wires would break like this. This is probably pretty hard to see, but this fish, the wire is pulled out here. That's the tag. The other wire is sticking all the way out here. This fish obviously had a pretty nasty wound on it. Um, not quite sure what caused that. This was obviously a rare circumstance. That was the only fish that we'd ever caught uh, like that. But um, this one has, I mean, it's like a hole that sucked into the side of the fish. No idea what caused that. Um, here, this tag is literally getting sucked into the fish. And I think I had another, oh, like this picture here, you can see it's getting pulled up. You can kind of see the dangler tag on the other side, but the wires are getting pulled up into the, into the fin of the fish there. So it seems like the, they either try to push them up out of the out of the dorsal fin or they try to suck them down through their body, which I can only imagine then they're going to try to expel out of their their body cavity. They're just kind of a uh, they're they're interesting creatures, that's for sure. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you.